basic thick pen to transform it to a nice hand pen. First, what we're going to do is we're going to take a dry piece of wood, drill a hole in what's going to be the top side of the closed. Nine o'clock would be closed as well. Corner so that we can begin to turn our bowl shape. Before we turn the tenon, again I need to get cut, which is a shearing cut, and just continue the curve up and then stop, leaving a shoulder in the center of the bowl, and make cuts that go from the top of the bowl down to the bottom. Once the sanding is complete, we can apply a coat of finish. And this is always fun because it finally allows us to see what the wood is going to look like. Down. I've replaced the smaller jaws in this chuck with these large jaws that have the cushioned buttons. To do this, we're going to have to sand up a little ways into the part that has been sanded nicely before. And now we get to put some finish on the bottom side of the bowl again and see what it's really going to look Procedure like. Procedure for turning a bowl out of dry stock. Some of the advantages of making custom made handles are that you can use different colors of wood so that you can color code the handles for easy identification. You can make sure that you get a handle that fits the tool well, that is weighted properly. You can make sure that it fits the, your hand in the right places the way you like to so it feels really good and functions the way that you like to. calipers and pick up the critical diameters for the tool handle that we're using as a template. Here we're just going to establish the end of the tool handle and also where the ferrule is going to begin. Do it off relatively quickly but also leaves a nice surface and it's really a nice tool for making gradual flowing curves like we have on this tool area to do the final shaping. We'll continue here with a 3 8 spindle gap, pushing the point straight in and scraping a small V groove. We can now apply the finish, which we'll do here with the lathe stop so that we can remove the marks from the drive center. Piece of wood and put it over the tip of the gouge and then take a mallet and drive the blade down into the handle. It's a noise to go from the larger diameter to the smaller the rest to guide the tool. Go ahead and work the shoulder down to the rest of the grooves. The last detail we're going to make on the tone chamber is a groove for the lanyard. Now this groove needs to be sand always with the grain. To remove any of those circulars, take your time with this. Really push it in there, work it in everywhere you can. Closer look at our call. We want to have a tenon turned on the stopper. Use a small 3 8 spindle gouge. And these are cuts that are just cuts here. Remember to always go downhill. Look at the shallow gouge here again. Put a couple more coats on after it's been removed from the lathe. But this a little better. Go ahead and push it again. Just glue that in. Keep shaping that. Now that we have our finished shape, we're going to make a couple of small detail cuts right up here. Still running true. Once we remove that center, it just might move slightly. So keep working it on. And then we're going to flip the lathe on to buff it out dry. We're just buffing with the set. Put that up, twist it, sure. onto the bandsaw, and then sand it nice and flat. And this half inch mandrel used to be a router bit. We're going to start out with a shallow spindle gouge to remove the square corners. We'll start with short strokes and just work along the blank. Notice here that the bevel of the tool is riding on the wood right behind the cutting edge and that the shavings are coming off in nice little curls. Down slightly, hold it firmly and just press it in until I hear that nice fun squeal that you get from a chatter tool. Not only make the surface shine a little bit, but we'll bring out the pattern in the chatter work. With the lathe stopped, and then turned the lathe on and pretty much immediately wiped off the excess finish from the surface. We're going to use epoxy here. This is two-part epoxy that we'll mix up in equal parts 